Okay. In the last few months, we continue to study the Kai Kanya that has been the body, contemplation of the body. And it usually mistranslated from Rupa. For many, many centuries, people believe that Rupa is body. But actually, Rupa has a specific meanings. Rupa is not about the body, but Rupa is awareness or recognition, a process of recognition of the body movement, body transformation from one second to another second, from time to time. A minutes before, we may be in a different position from what we are now. A minute before, we may sit, but now we are standing. And even the thinking, our thought, keep transforming and moving from one stage to another stage. So there's no permanence in the body. How do we contemplate the body? In the Sutta, the Buddha analyzes it in different ways. One of which is contemplated the, the breath, breathing in, breathing out. The activity, not the air coming in, the air coming out, but the activity of our body. Some guru advised that we should contemplate the belly, moving up, moving down. And in contemplation, in observation, of the belly, we can see the movement, which is a part or manifestation of the impermanence. Because it keeps moving up, moving down. Alternatively, or traditionally, people observing the air, the act of breathing in, the act of breathing out. And the act of breathing in and act of breathing out is actually is dictated by five algorithm. A feeling, a perception, a mental formation, and our consciousness. And mostly our consciousness give the feedback to what the process of rupa should be. So rupa is not the material form, it's a conceptual ideology or a conceptual function. It's a process of understanding about a body. So contemplation of the rupa and try to analyze Rupa will give us more wisdom to understand the nature of the thing which is impermanent. So really, Nama Rupa, just the the name, the concept, is not the physical thing as people should think, believe that they, they, they usually translate the body and the mind. But it's not body and the mind. Namba Rupa is a process of understanding our body and mind. 
is a process of learning and understanding our body and mind. If we are aware and mindful about the Nama Rupa, that means we continuously observing the impermanent nature of our body and mind. Our mind keeps changing. Our body keeps changing. You see, if you pay attention to your body, you can see only in a few minutes, you gather and exhibit a million changes in your body. I tried to record that video. And after we finish the lesson, you should see it for yourself. You see whether you're sitting properly or you're moving your head or you're moving your hand. And every movement con consisting of millions of changes. Even you moving your head is constitute a million, millions changes in your body, in the rupa. The question here, do you understand why you do it? Do you understand why it exists? Can you see it? Can you observe it? And that create the samasati, that means recognition and mindful, mindfulness. And mindfulness is a very important factor in the Eight Noble Pathway. The first thing we have to be aware of what happened to our body, why we move our body in a certain way, why we use our body in a certain way. Is it because of habit, because of culture, or because of uh, voluntary action, or because we just don't know? It's a karma. Somebody tried to scratch their head unintentionally. This has become habit. Somebody try to pick up the glass of water, even, even if he or she is not in thirsty. He or she is not thirsty, but still pick up the glass of water because the karma is a habit. If you feel you're thirsty, you drink and you pick up the glass of water with intention. That's okay. That creates a wisdom. But even if you drink a glass of water, have you observed the quality of the water, the taste of the water? If not, unfortunately, you are acting like animals. And if you are acting like animals when you are alive, when you die, you'll be reborn in the animal realms. That's the consequence. Okay, so everything we do with our body is not the flesh, eye, ear, or hand, but the awareness, awareness, and mindfulness. First thing, we have to be aware that we are using our body. And secondly, we have to be mindful to use this in a proper way, beneficial for us, beneficial for everybody. You move in your body. You dancing. You move. You dancing in the in the house. That's okay. But would it annoy your family members, your husband, your son, your daughter, when they are studying, and you keep dancing and moving? So, the improper use of the body without the wisdom create the bad karmic energy. And it did take you to another one. You keep doing it again and again because you like it. Just ignoring the environment or ignoring whether it's create the benefit for you. 
We should do it because the karmic energy, the habit. And the Buddha said, it's a karma, take you to another life. If you want to be, you will be. Because the way you do, we dictate what you will be. It's very simple. Okay. So today, I just mentioned to you briefly about the awareness in observation, not awareness about your body activity. No, it would take about another month for you to study before you can do it. But the lesson today is just concentrate on the awareness. You have to establish the awareness in whatever you do. And in doing so, you have to do observation. Aware that you are observing your activity, aware that you are not observing your activity, aware that you are failing to observe your body activity, aware that you are continuously observing your mind, observing your mind when your body moving or you just acting like animal, okay? So the important point is you have to be aware, even aware of observation. If you're not aware of your observation, you will fail. The act of observation becomes karma because you observe it as a habit. I see, I hear, I smell. But you are mindful of your action or not. If you are not aware that you are observing, and then you are not mindful. You can work, but work like animal. Not be cautious of what you are working whether you step on the ants, the insects, or you're falling down on the stair. So the first thing is awareness. Awareness is very important. Even aware that you are observing, aware that you are not observing, aware that you are failing to observe. You have to understand it. You have to be aware or not to be aware. The knowledge or the, the knowledge about whether you are aware, whether you're aware of your action, whether you are aware of your observation, whether you are aware of whatever happened surrounding you, actually the wisdom. Even you fail to observe, but if you are aware that you are failing to observe it, and that leads to the wisdom too, because you know you're failing. If you know you're failing, that's wisdom. You see? Sounds funny, is it? No. If you try to do it, you will learn. If you do, you are aware, if you are not aware, then you know you are not aware. You fail to aware, you fail to observe, you fail to do a proper, proper thing, proper acts. And that is wisdom. Okay? Called Panya. Wisdom. Knowing what's ever happened. Don't make a judgment whether it's right or wrong. Don't make a judgment whether it's correct or incorrect. Don't make a judgment whether it's proper or improper. It doesn't make sense. You just be aware. Aware of whatever happened. Aware of failing to observe. Aware of failing to aware. Sometimes you 
just let your mind flowing, flowing in a river. You don't observe it. You do, you are not aware of whatever happened surrounding you. But if you contemplate, you will see you are aware that you are not aware. And at the in point, point in time, you create a wisdom. The knowledge that you are not aware actually create a wisdom. A little drop of the water, and very soon it will create the pool of the water. Okay, I think that's enough for today. So we promise you only 15 minutes a lesson. Give you the time to observe. Even if you fail to observe, you have to be aware, aware that you fail to observe. Fail to be aware. Okay. Any question? Because when you teach, uh, we must uh, aware what uh, I do. So I think that is the discipline. Because when uh, uh, the process of the knowledge, every action, uh, you said that um, there are million action uh, connect together. Why uh, I I don't know the way I realize that the a million action in the process of the knowledge. Yes, that that is your job. If you want to liberate yourself, you have to control your body. So you see, I record the video, and then you keep watching your video again. You will see your body moving. You see, your head moving left or right, and even your eyes blinking. So every action constituted a million, millions action. See, the question is not about the action. The question here, the Buddha teaching is whether you are aware of whatever happened to your body. Yoniso manas, manasikara, that means you use your body in a proper way. Okay. With intention, good intention. By analogy, I told you already, you see a glass of water in front of you. When you see your eyes, your eyes see the glass of water, immediately your hand put down to pick up the glass and you want to drink. Even if you are not thirsty. You are not thirsty, but you still drink because it's a habit. When you see the glass of water, like Coca-Cola or coffee or something in your favorite, and you want to drink it, orange juice or something you like in front of you and you pick up the glass and drink it even if you're not thirsty. So what's wrong? The wrong is you're not observing. Number two, you're not be mindful of your action. Number three, you actually create the karmic energy for the next slide. So aware and mindfulness and control your action. The three steps. So first thing you have to be aware, aware of something surrounding you, aware of your reaction to the surrounding circumstances. As soon as you react, you establish I, me, my, I drink, I do. And when you establish I, my, me, you actually establish identity. Five algorithm come into place and you create the karma. 
Okay. You try to uh, to watch the uh, this uh, video clips again. Only fifteen minutes. Okay. Shall we pray before we leave? May all the merit cultivated through our learning of the true Dharma will release us from the suffering in mind and in body. Because we understand the nature of the five average is impermanence. May all be happy in this life and in future life. May all will cultivate goodness. Saru, Saru, Saru. Sato, Sato.